my name is Christopher Greenwood, and I'm delighted to welcome you to another episode of the World Consciousness Alliance series, Conversations for Change. These are all excellent conversations with notable people in their fields, living and acting with the values that the WCA or World Consciousness Alliance stands for. And that is living by the highest possibilities of human refinement, kindness, compassion, unconditional love. We believe that ahimsa is the best method to live by in life. That's non-violence in thoughts, words, or actions. And now's the time where we should be talking more about responsibilities rather than rights. That's responsibilities to this earth and the generations to come. Today, I'm very excited to introduce two very interesting guests. Their work is revolutionary and this has the potential to change the understanding of one of the most fundamental elements to life on earth and that's water. Now in life there's many unsung heroes which we don't hear about and here's two of them which we're delighted to give the time and space so more people can hear about their work. I'll give you a bit of a background about Eric and Dolph. That's Eric Larica and Dolph Zantinge. Eric started off as a veterinarian and he was the first person in the Netherlands to use acupuncture and also chiropractor in that industry. He's authored many books and this treatment that in holistic in nature naturally led him to his interest in water where he met his collaborator Dolph. Dolph himself is an entrepreneur and a scientist and after a background in telecommunications, artificial intelligence, he started to follow more of his side passion, which was around the Eastern medicines of acupuncture and Chinese medicine. This looked at the electromagnetic frequencies and their effect on the biology of humans and other species and plants. This drew him into his work now, which we'll talk about today, along with lots of other interesting insights and it's something incredible. What they've done, what they've discovered, is a way which we can bring water back to its natural coherent state. So without further ado, I welcome Eric and Dolph to talk through some questions in this conversation for change. Thank you very much, Dolph and Eric, for joining me here. Um, it's a pleasure to have you, have you both. It really is. Thank you. The World Consciousness Alliance as um, you may be aware, what we stand for is the highest refinement of human values, humanity. So that's kindness, compassion, uh, and unconditional love. And one of our key things, which we always believe in, is ahimsa, which is nonviolence in thoughts, words, or actions. And what we're doing with various programs here on the WCA, World Conscious Alliance, is bringing this consciousness to people to try and bring this to the hearts of many so that we can bring a shifting collective consciousness for the future. So with that as an opener, I'd like to ask an open question. What do you think about that? Do you think it's needed? Uh, well, I think so. <laughs> yeah. We need this. So, um, well, I think if, if we could reach that, then we're going to have a completely different mankind, a completely different planet. And uh, so I think fully understand what uh, mind you means with it, because that if this is going to be our future, then we will stop ourselves by destroying this planet and destroying other people. And the planet will be completely different if we can reach that point. So, And without, without that, where do you see the future of Earth going? Where do you see the future of humanity? We, we know many things are happening in the world at the moment. It looks like people are going to go back into another lockdown situation. Tensions are rising, polarization is happening. What do you see for the future? Of it. Well, what we do see is that uh, we will go th through some very serious challenges in the coming years. Um, what you do see is that uh, you always, uh, normally you have a certain stability on this planet, but that stability is gone. We have seen it already to the elections in the USA. We see other powers coming up. We see an incredible power, a problem coming up in the environmental uh, issues around this world. The climate problem will be an issue. A lot of people uh, uh, due to COVID are becoming more and more poor. So the difference between rich and poor is increasing. Yeah. 
And on top of that, we also see a strange increase in technology that everybody adopts without asking themselves what are the risks. So we will go through some very serious challenges, I believe. Yeah, it, it look, it's looking that way for sure. The positive side is maybe, hopefully, that usually you need a good crisis, you know, to come to new values. And uh, personally, I hope that, you know, uh, this whole chaos we're heading to, where we're already in the, in the middle of it, that people are starting to realize what the true values are. And you just mentioned them. Yeah. So hopefully more and more people will change their minds and we'll see that the way we're heading now is heading for disaster. So it could be also be uh, a positive if we are going to deal with it in a good way. Yeah, it seems like it's almost prime for some reset, really, of consideration yeah. around what we thought life was before. Yeah. Yeah. This mad rush that everybody seemed to be part of within the world. Yeah. Chasing possessions, positions, the philosophy of capitalism, greed. Yeah. It's there's no way there's no way back anymore. Yeah. We touched on um something which is also before the, the corona situation happened was a very big topic, um, which was climate change. Now it's something I'd like to link that to your to your own work with water is um something if you can expand on this. But what happens when ice melts? When the ice is going to melt, then this planet is heating up dramatically. You will see that the currents, the ocean currents that create our climate, they will change because these currents, they have waveforms, they go through the poles and they keep this whole planet alive. If it, does, if it doesn't cool down, then we have a very big problem. Your complete biological system will go away it will change dramatically by the way because uh, a lot of those biological systems are very dependent upon a certain stability in the temperature if these currents are going away then we will see that certain areas will get a lot of rain and there will be areas without no rain at all so you have very big problems with your harvest and we will see a lot of refugees all over the world and that creates an immense instability so if the poles are really uh, without ice, then we have a real big problem. It's completely changed then the, the biosphere, everything. Everything, everything. For a nice example is like our countries. Uh, we have a, a mild climate because we have a warm Gulf Stream. And if uh, the it's because of uh, the ice water from Greenland, it goes down in Greenland and, you know, it flows through the, like to the South Pole and it comes up over there. So it, keep, it keeps on having the flow if uh, the flow um, if there will be no water anymore like in Greenland for the melting left over there then probably the the, the whole uh, stream will shift and we'll get what they think maybe a, a polar time over here ice time over here wow and so the the uh, actually I think one The move because if you don't have anything to drink, you're going to look for some so to places where you can where there's water, yeah. and it is already a huge problem. Fresh drinking water. People think that we have so much water, but they don't realize that it's only I think 0.5 percent or something like that. I don't know what the exact something like that that uh, of the water we have is drinkable water. Wow. So if there's no drinkable water, you're going to look for it because you only have two three days to left to survive. <laughs> so the, this probably will we get a huge amount of people traveling around on this planet. They're not by plane or whatever, but they have to, you know, uh, look going to look for water. So this will the whole politics system will collapse in, in, at that moment. Yeah, mass migrations. Yeah, you, you get you get uh, water wars, you get conflicts. It is dramatic. Wow, if that is going to happen. It is really dramatic. Yeah. yeah. And you said, um, you touched something interesting there, that only 0.5% is actually drinkable. Yeah. 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 Only 3% of the water in the world is sweet water, but of that, most of it is frozen. Wow. Yeah, okay. It's something to know. Uh, uh, dirty to drink. Yeah. I mean, and that's, that's another issue uh, that the, the, we've been putting so many toxins 
in the water and a lot of people think that it's easy to clean it, but it's not. Actually, actually last week there was in, uh, in the news over here in Holland that we have a lot of water, as maybe a lot of people know. We have tremendous amount of water, but uh, our water uh, is, you know, becoming contaminated because of uh, many toxins, you know, medicine, which we pee out and goes back into the system, all kind of chemicals we've been using in, uh, in, 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 in agriculture and stuff like that. And it's not like easy to get them out. So even the fresh water, which is left over from here, uh, will be very hard in the future to drink it. It's it's really is we're on the cusp of something really big. I think to reach these points as well though, there's there's always a history, because now what we're experiencing is probably the effect of multiple causes over many many years, and um, what we'd say from the World Conscious Alliance is that that's from a degeneracy really of, of humans, you know, moving from away from caring for each other, from compassion to just more outright greed and um, trying to take more for for individuals. When do you think? this degeneracy in human consciousness started and where have we reached now? Hmm. Well, I think what we reach now is uh, that's quite obvious. <laughs> so it's easy to answer that question. I think, well, I think nobody knows when it started. I mean, it's not like the last 50 years uh, started. I mean, uh, if you look at the Roman time, if you look in times before, um, and greed was always there and I've uh, been there for a long time and uh, so but the, the big issue is now is because we are with so many people yeah. and with all the new techniques that we have uh, you know it, 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 the contamination uh, and everything goes a lot faster <clears throat> than it did like you know in, in the Roman time or you know in the Middle Ages or, uh, uh, or something like that so the impact of every human being, you know, how much, how much waste we produce, et cetera, et cetera, is a lot, a lot bigger than it was, uh, you know, many years ago. We have, um, if you look at only at plastic, you know, how many plastic is there in the ocean? Yeah, true. Uh, I mean, for 50, 100 years ago, there was no plastic. So actually, we're accelerating in, 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 in tremendously. Yeah. I think what Ron Parker is this is also related to uh, the economy. Everything nowadays is based upon the economy, and it is always now short-term economy. Yeah, mass consumerism, mass production, short-term quarterly figures, and if that is not going to change, then we have a very, very serious issue. Yeah, this is it. You know, businesses create products on a mass scale. With, which can't be renewed, which can't be recycled, and then create the need for, for those to be bought as well. Yeah. The problem is we live in an economy where, uh, you know, uh, you're doing good if you produce more, if you uh, use more of the, 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 um, the stuff, you know, the minerals and everything what we have on, on this planet. Uh, and we're just shifting from one bad place to the next bad place. For example, now everybody wants an electric car because it's better, because less CO2, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Well, people don't realize that, uh, I was reading an article and it says that we actually need 12 times more uh, minerals, you know, to produce all yeah. the batteries and everything for the electric cars. So it's just shifting from one bad place to the next bad place. If you're not gonna change our minds, it, 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 it wouldn't change. No, I wonder if we'll ever get to um, utilization of the earth rather than exploitation, because yeah. that's just what it, it seems to be at all levels. Yeah, yeah. true. Yeah. And there is another thing, uh, Chris, a lot of inventions that, uh, that maybe have already been there are not introduced because all the things that can really change the economy in such a way are in control by certain multinationals. Yeah. So the, the changes that have to take place are, well, <laughs> you, you, you seldom see them because they're not part of the economical ball game. Yeah. And that, that's another issue. Yeah, the, the central uh, power structure almost. And of course, the big problem is I think that, you know, most money is just in the hands for a few people. And uh, they're not the ones who think a lot about other people. 
and so they don't take care of it, uh, other people, etc. There is more than enough money on this planet to save this planet. Yeah. But, uh, you know, there's something, something strange, I think, with money that a lot of people, when they have it, they just want more. Yeah. Because it doesn't give them satisfaction in the way they th thought it would give them satisfaction. So they want more. And even after that, they have money, they have more, you need more, et cetera, et cetera. So it's, it's, it's quite strange. And if you look at it in money-wise, that uh, uh, if you look at money, money is not a bad thing of, uh, with money, but money is like energy. And some people, you know, just want to have a lot of it. And some people don't have anything, or most people don't have anything. So uh, uh, the way it's divided, it, it, it's a very strange situation. So um, I think... Just a few people on this planet are busy to destroy this planet. I mean, normal people are not busy with it. They just want to have a nice life. Yeah. And they, they, they want to be satisfied. They want to have, you know, the, 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 a nice job and the house, family, etc. So they're not be busy with it. So it's not like I don't personally don't believe that all people are bad people or something like that. Uh, most people I know in their hearts, they're good people. They're just, you know, dragged in the red race. Yeah. Is there anything you think we can do now to change this mindset? Because it seems to be that everything's geared towards this. Do you know, even maybe schooling systems as well is pushed towards this producing consumerist output. Um, is there anything from what you've seen and what you've experienced that you could say, these are the, some practical steps which we could bring into our lives to help change? What you see anyway, Chris, is that a lot of people become aware of this. The fact that we already discussed this, this discussion is taking place all over the world. Yeah. And I think it should be part of the training of young people, especially in schools, uh, that we create an awareness that what we do is completely wrong and that we have a limited time frame. Yeah. So I think this, it starts with awareness. Otherwise, we are lost. And I believe that this awareness is taking place in many places all over the world. But we have to change dramatically in our complete mindset. Yeah. And uh, also that we still believe that we are not connected to this planet. That is a very strange way of thinking. We are in this planet. We are completely connected to it. Yeah. But for some strange reason, in the scientific world, we made that split. And that is dramatic. Yeah. It's interesting that you say that as well, because um, whilst whilst we are, have lost the connection to probably the planet and each other, our impact, um, we couldn't be more connected with technology if we wanted to be, with social media, telecommunications. Um, and that's really brought, should have brought us together really, but actually we've now become more separate from each other and also the place that we live. I think our consciousness uh, was always a part of a human being. I mean, for couple of hundreds of years we are dividing ourselves let's put it from the cosmos you can call it god you can call it the, the quantum field you can call it the, the, the field the zero point whatever and we lost our connection with it and we created a new god and it's called tech <laughs> you know and that's becoming our new god and uh, the last 50 100 years or whatever we lost completely contact with uh, with our planet so actually, we're just walking somewhere on this planet by thinking that we are not part of anything. Yeah. So the best way, I think, is to make people aware that you're connected to everything, you know, to, uh, to every other person, that you're just part of the whole, uh, uh, whole on the whole energy, uh, the, the morphogenetic field, whatever how you want to call it, that we're all part of, uh, that we're all one yeah. in that way. And uh, uh, make people aware that not everything, you know, uh, since people don't believe in anything anymore after this life, they want to get everything out of this life now. And they can be egoistic bastard because it gives you uh, a second car, a third car, whatever you want. Yeah. And uh, uh, they're just not aware that your time frame here on this planet is just a split yeah. over here. And so... What are you going to do after that? That's maybe more important than what are you going to do over here? Yeah, that's true. People don't seem to have that view, do they? It's all about collecting. What can we acquire when you can't take anything? Uh, well, let's talk a little bit about social media <laughs> because there is a 
there is, of course, a very important discussion going on in the world. What we do see is that social media was there to make a connection. But the reality, if you go to Silicon Valley and you, you are going to have a discussion with what's really going on, then you see that there is one big manipulation going on with the data that we offer. Yes. All the data is now collected by some very big organizations. They can even influence political choices in the world. And uh, with all kinds of artificial intelligence technology, we are changing the behavior of the people. We, we are really moving towards a manipulation out of this data. That was never, never the meaning of this. But we move in a very fast way in that direction. So the whole social media uh, is creating a very big problem in this world at the moment. Yeah, it's completely, I think, um, I don't know if you've seen, there's a documentary, I think a documentary film that's out, which was uh, incredibly um, impactful, which talks about this and that the job of these companies, whilst we think it keeps us connected, it's actually more to keep us on that screen as long as we can be on there. Instead of moving towards their consciousness, they are moving towards a digital world. And that is very strange. That is even very frightening that that is going to happen. And especially young, young people are very close connected to the digital world. And they are the ones that have to change it at the end of the day. So there is, there is a lot of discussion going on. I'm very pleased that some of the CEOs of these companies are becoming aware of that as well. Uh, but how to change that, that is, that is definitely an, uh, an issue. And what you do see now is a lot of politicians are moving in that direction that they want to control the data to start to do the manipulation. Yeah. It's still the same challenge again with that control, the greed, the power structure, yeah. the money yeah. as well behind it, because it's big money, isn't it? These are now some of the largest in the world, these organizations, the tech firms. Yeah. And do not only think that there are only tech tech firms. A lot of the political parties in the world, especially in big countries, they do exactly the same. So uh, that is uh, another challenge that we have, not only the climate, but also how to get rid of this digital revolution of manipulation. And I think we, we have to understand that. And for instance, the fact that we discussed that means that a lot of people are aware of it as well. That's good. That's yeah, good. Absolutely. So we're also connected... Um, I'd like to ask you if the, we spoke briefly, really, the telecommunications, which supports all this. You know, it's given us some good points. It's also created some bad. If you'd be able to explain a little bit more about this, because I know with some of the work that you do, you have uh, an interest, really, in some of these um, technologies and related to water. Yeah, well, you know, I have a, I have a, a, a telco background, so I work together with Eric for more than 14 years already upon the issues of telco, because the, the, what we have seen is the following. Uh, since we introduced uh, the mobile phone instead of wired system, uh, since those days, we are radiating through the ether certain waveforms. Um, what we found in our laboratory is that these waveforms, they have a conflict with an electromagnetic ecosystem that is hanging around the world. In the biology, that is hardly known, but there is a huge field of frequencies and ecosystem that supports us. And that is completely connected to the planet, to the sun and the moon and all those things. And we are just at the very beginning to find out what it does. But what we do see is that these frequencies they have a very serious negative effect upon this electromagnetic ecosystem. And that will influence everything. It will influence the climate, it will influence our behavior, as even our behavior can be influenced by these waveforms. And for us, and that was for Eric and myself, one of the most critical areas, we have also seen that it has a huge impact upon the life. And that is why we constantly did all those tests in our laboratory to see can we protect water in such a way and make it so stable that those influences are not harmful anymore so that we can bring it back in a natural order. And that was for us a very serious challenge. And we were very lucky that we have reached that goal. But now we also have to create an awareness that when we are sending out 50,000 satellites in the world, 
yeah. that is going to beam radiation through the clouds, then these clouds are giving rain, and this rain is already in a chaotic structure. And that means a lot of harvests in the world, the food production in the world, will be influenced by this. So there is a for us, it's a, it's, a, it's a daily discussion. As a matter of fact, we are dealing with a lot of scientists now to make sure that this knowledge comes available to the rest of the world. And the second thing that we do is see, can we create water that can protect us against these harmful radiation? And that is what we do on a daily basis. Because a lot of people don't seem to understand how important this is. And that actually water is the most important thing uh, the, what we think for changing uh, the, the, the energy on, on this planet. Um, uh, most people don't realize that all the water which, with, which is here on the planet has been there before even this planet started off. And water is a broadband absorber for all electro electromagnetic fields. I mean, this is hard science. Uh, we live on, a, on, on this planet because we have an atmosphere, and this atmosphere contains water, and it absorbs 70% of the incoming energy. And if you would, you know, press all the, 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 the water, you know, in liquid water, then it only would be three centimeters of water. So three centimeters of water is capable of absorbing 70% of the incoming uh, electromagnetic energy. We only believe, our biggest issue is that we only believe in what we see, and it's just a part, small part of, of the electromagnetic uh, field. And um, if you look at your body, I mean, your body is 99% of the molecules in your body is water. And so not in, in weight, but in, in molecule wise. So that means that actually, we contain more water than molecule-wise there is in the sea, because in the sea it's only 96% water. So we are a broadband absorber for all electromagnetic fields. I mean, this is pure hard science. Mm -hmm. And in quantum physics, it's well known what they say, that not matter, but quantum information is the building block of everything. So if that is true, and everything what just to just state this are facts that means that we are you know uh, changing all the we are changing the information so the and we're changing the water structure so we it's even hard even if you do your best it's hard, very hard to receive the right information because there's many harmful information around us i mean that if my telephone catch it, catches it over here my brain will also and, and so the, 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 the work we tried to do the last couple of years to bring the water in a certain state that it receives the, the positive, the good energy and, you know, the, the, and not the harmful ones. And this, this um, is information is important for our biology then, for our yeah. growth and our health and the aspects like this of our life. We'll, we'll see the damage in, in, in 20, 30 years and that's the issue. Oh. I mean, the children, yeah, because I mean, the children, who, or maybe or you already see it, but the children who grow up now with all uh, that stuff, with bad water, with bad food, everything. I mean, when you're young, you have a lot of energy le left over, so you won't see it that, that, that hard. But even that is not true. If you look at it, in, I think it's about 43% of uh, the Dutch uh, children, 20 years old, already have a chronic disease. Wow. And uh, three uh, percent, a lot, and all of them, you know, they have to still have a complete life in front of them. So if we continue like like this, one thing I know for sure, we're not going to live longer as we think we are. Uh, we have better hygiene, everything. So we think we're getting more healthy and uh, live longer. Well, we don't have a clue what's going to happen because we change our information and. Like I said, not uh, matter, but information is the building block of everything, and we don't have a clue what we, what we, uh, how, what, what the impact will be of changing all the information with, which comes to us. Yeah, so we're setting ourselves up really as an experiment. We d we don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's very strange, Chris. We are doing an investment in this, uh, for instance, this five G. Uh, installation in the world of hundreds of billions of dollars. It's an incredible investment and we haven't tested it 
of what it does for humans and on the biological system. Wow. It's amazing. And even if you look at energy-wise, you know how much energy it will drain is that I think it was 1.8 times the amount of energy we use now in this country. Uh, uh, only 5G is going to use that amount of energy. Just that alone? Yeah. Yeah, and on top of that, we will increase the number of data centers. <coughs> there is now... So increase now. exponentially then? Oh, yeah. To capture the data, servers, heating or cooling even of them. Wow, yeah, okay. Yeah. They're building a huge uh, uh, windmill park over here and everything is going to be used by Google. Wow. <laughs> okay. And what, and what does this give us, though? It just gives us more of the social media in quicker time, which you were speaking about, right? 10 to 100 times faster, but yeah. it doesn't make us happier. No. Um, I spoke with a lot of uh, people who are looking to children, psychologists who are looking to, cheap people, uh, to children, and they've seen that a lot of the children 10 years ago were much happier. Yeah. And um, this is due to the effect of social media at the moment. So, so I, we love social media as long as it is used in the right way. Yeah, because there's no safeguards as there is for other industries, really, for the youth, for the children, for, I mean, TV, you can only put certain programs there, right? For you have to have, have safeguarding and all these type of um, policies. But with social media, it's just available. Yeah, yeah. yeah and the changes that they already proved that, that, you know, if you, that your brains are really going to change if you, uh, uh, if you look too much on social media, etc. So or even anatomically wise, your brains are, are changing because of that. Yeah. yeah. Well, my, my next question was, was going to be um, about human greed and, and what do we think the future is and, and where do we see the end? But I think we've, I think we've probably got to go yeah, yeah. quite, a, uh, quite a dramatic yeah, we're, way. We're still optimistic, Chris. I mean, uh, I think that uh, we are learning the hard way. Yeah. That is the choice to, that we made. But... I think we are learning, and as long as there are some people standing up and have the guts to say what is truth and that really show action and take action, yeah. I think it will be an example for a lot of other people. And I also believe a lot of people are waiting for people standing up and to take the right action. So I'm absolutely not pessimistic in the long run. Yeah. In the short yeah. run, I see we face some very serious challenges. It's almost like the human nature, something has to come together for the next thing, the momentum to move us into a better direction. Yeah. No. This yeah. is uh, exactly what we're looking to do with this, with this platform. Have great people like yourself, the sort of unsung heroes. I mean, what the work that you've done is fantastic. And um, I'm looking forward to more people um, hearing about this. Is there, is there plans for you um, to help get this information out? The findings oh, absolutely. From what we, we do, for instance, uh, we work very close also with the Mahanji organization to see if we can spread this message. We give uh, constantly, we give uh, presentations all over the world. And uh, Eric and I are constantly in contact with the people that uh, try to bring this message in the way that we can tell the people what it does, what it means, etc. etc. But we have to do it step by step. Yeah. Yeah, actually, our uh, uh, message is quite simple. What we want to have to actually to get our, in our perspective, the the the, we can help changing the hardware, and the hardware is water. Mm -hmm. uh, like we said, you did, it, you know, you see, look at look at water as a radio, you know, and there, there's there's no. Um, uh, uh, there's nothing in the radio. I mean, not the broadcasting is not in the radio. It receives back the water in like in, uh, in the right coherent structure. You get the right information. Then you will stop by yourself uh, destroying because that's not part of our nature. That's not part of the cosmos. And so our goal actually is, uh, you know, get as fast as possible, make all the water on this planet coherent again. Right. And that, that will change the plants, changes uh, the animals, it changes the way you think, it changes everything. So actually, that's uh, our small goal. <laughs> change everything, change the hardware of existence. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. But on top of that, the mindset of the people also have to change. Uh, Chris. Mm -hmm. 
definitely. Yeah. And uh, we, for some strange reason, we, we stick to old structures and we limit our mind as well. And in that aspect, I think uh, we'd have to come up with a complete new way of thinking and looking to ourselves and to this planet. Yeah, I think that's probably the truth, right? That's, that's what has to happen. So conversation by conversation, we're bringing new awareness on for the World Consciousness Alliance. Thank you very much, Eric and Dolph. It's been fantastic to have you on and to hear your insights for all the topics that we've discussed and uh, an absolute pleasure to be able to share a conversation with you and, and also give a platform for, for the work that you're doing. And we really look forward to this coming out with much more force um, throughout the world. Chris, you're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.